Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 8 of the chapter Organic Chemistry, Some Basic Principles and Techniques. Before we move on to doing the nomenclature or understanding how to name the organic compounds, it is important to know two concepts. One is what are functional groups and the other is homologous series. So in this video, I'm going to explain both of these to you. The first is functional group. You know, when we talk of hydrocarbons, I told you that they are compounds of carbon and hydrogen. And there may be other elements present in the molecule, but they are predominantly compounds of carbon and hydrogen. So when you have some other elements like oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, which may be present in the compound, the compound still remains organic compound, but these elements which are a little different and they may be present in the molecule in a certain form, in a certain um, way, that is in a, in a fixed manner. And each one of these groups that is present where the atoms of maybe other elements are bound in a certain way, they impart special properties to the compound. And since they impart properties or the properties of that uh, hydrocarbon depend on that particular part which has got the uh, special group. And since a reaction is nothing but a function, an action, therefore these are known as functional groups because these groups of atoms become uh, responsible for the reactions of that particular compound. If you take a normal hydrocarbon, sometimes just the presence of a double bond or a triple bond, the double and the triple bond become the sites of activity or reaction. Therefore, we tend to put these, although they are not really uh, atoms, additional atoms in the molecule, yet the presence of a single double and triple bond also affects the reaction or the reactivity of the second and the triple bond, the double and the triple bond, they become the sites of activity. Therefore, we usually put them in functional groups too. So, if you had to define, how would you define a functional group? A functional group may be defined as an atom or a group of atoms joined in a specific manner which is responsible for the characteristic chemical properties of the organic compounds. So, they combine in a specific manner and because of that specific manner in which they have combined and they are connected to the um, hydrocarbon, they become the site, they become responsible for certain, uh, certain characteristic properties and we, that class of compounds are identified as compounds of that functional group. For example, when you take an alkane, you've studied this alkane, alkenes and alkynes, you've studied in class 10. The alkanes, alkenes and alkynes, in alkanes you have all single bonds between carbon atoms. In alkenes you have double bonds, one or more double bonds. And in alkynes between two carbon atoms you may have a triple bond or more than one. So the properties, they depend on this, uh, the, these are the sites that become active and therefore these are studied as functional groups. Other functional groups may be halides, that is haloalkanes, haloarenes. It's a separate chapter that you would be studying in class 12. So halides are where one of the hydrogens of a hydrocarbon is replaced by a halogen. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, you could have uh, water, chloromethane, you may have dichloromethane, uh, bromomethane or whatever, a halogen when it substitutes a hydrogen, it results in the formation of that functional group is known as a halide. When you have OH group, the OH group is known as the alcoholic group. So any organic compound, if it has OH in it, it becomes an alcohol. So and since it becomes an alcohol, it has the properties of alcohols. And therefore, that part, the OH part is responsible for that, for those properties. And therefore, it is the functional group. Aldehydes is another functional group. It has the formula CHO where the carbon uh, is attached to the main hydrocarbon with C, H and O. The CHO group is known as the aldehydic group and all compounds which have the functional group CHO are known as aldehydes. Ketones are where you have two alkyl groups here and C double bond O in the middle of the chain. 
any compound which has C double bond O in the middle of a chain would be a ketone. Nitriles are C triple bond N. It will be present on the end of a chain. Why? Because carbon can form only four bonds. And if it is forming three bonds with nitrogen, obviously it is forming only one other bond. And in order to form just one other bond, it should be connected to the carbon of the chain. So this would be a kind of a terminal group. You'll understand this uh, better when, as we keep studying this. But you know, I just put a little bit of information here and there at places where you really are not, we are not really focusing on that part. But since you've heard it once and you may hear it here and there once again, by the time you do it, it becomes very easy and clear to you. So you have the cyano group. It is also, they are also known as the nitriles. Ethers are where you have R, O, R. Do you see? Ketones are R, C, O, R. R is an alkyl group. And R and R are alkyl groups. It may be methyl, ethyl, propyl, whatever. And O, when you have an oxygen in between, it is an ether. I know since we have not yet done, studied these uh, compounds, you may feel, uh, you may not feel very comfortable with these, but just listen to them once and try to see the formulae. When you actually do them, it will be easier for you to understand them. Carboxylic acid is the functional group in which is COOH. If the compound has COOH, it is a carboxylic acid. And it is this part which is responsible for its, its acidic behavior. Therefore, the functional group is COOH. Then there is a carboxylate ion. The carboxylate ion would be formed when the H is removed from the carboxylic acid. So it is COO negative because H positive will be removed. So you'll be left with the, an ion that is COO negative. It is known as the carboxylate ion. Esters are COOR. If in place of hydrogen you have an alkyl group, it becomes an ester. So R, before this would be R, an alkyl group, COOR. Acyl halides. Acyl halides are COX, where to uh, COX, uh, where X in place of H you have an X, that is a halogen. The halogen will be fluorine, chlorine, bromine or iodine. So these are known as acyl halides. Now come to amines. Ammonia is NH3. When one of the hydrogens of ammonia is replaced by an alkyl group, you get an amine, NH2. And that NH2 is the functional group of the, uh, of the hydrocarbon. So such compounds where ammonia becomes a substitute with the removal of one hydrogen from uh, ammonia and one hydrogen from the alkane, you get an amine. You can replace two hydrogens and get two alkyl groups also. So it is, um, you will get R, NH, R or all three hydrogens of ammonia could be replaced by alkyl groups. In that case, you have these three bonds here. Only nitrogen forming three bonds with three different carbon atoms. Anyway, amines basically are when ammonia is one of the hydrogens is knocked off ammonia and it joins the hydrocarbon to form an amine. Amide is CONH2. Amine is just NH2 and amide would be just as we had acyl halide, amides would be where CONH2. CO, if one of another hydrogen is replaced by an alkyl group, an alkyl group is represented by R. So it would be CONHR. If the second hydrogen, the, that is the third hydrogen, is also replaced, then it will become CONR2. Such compounds are known as amides. The nitro group is NO2. And sulfonic acid, you know, carboxylic acid is COOH and sulfonic acid is SO3H. So these are the different functional groups. Do you understand what functional groups are now? A functional group is a group of atoms or a single atom or even in the case of alkene and alkyne, it is just the uh, uh, what um, pi electrons or uh, the second and the third bonds. This group of atoms or single atom or multiple bonds which are responsible for the reactions of that particular compound or for the functions of the compound. Therefore, such groups that affect the um, or that determine the properties of that compound are known as functional groups. 
So now let us come to the next concept that is a homologous series. In class 10 also you've done the homologous series of alkanes, alkenes and alkynes, you remember? If you have one carbon atom in a molecule, um, we use the prefix smith. For 2, it. For 3, it is prop. 4, but. 5, pet. So you have methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane. Those are the names, but we'll be doing the nomenclature from the next video onwards. Let us understand what homologous series is. If you can describe a compound by a general formula, that is, for example, in methane, you have one carbon atom and the number of hydrogens can be represented by, that is, in methane, I would say, oops, I would say that there is one carbon, so I would write N, and hydrogens are 2N plus 2. That is twice the number of N, the number of carbons, plus 2. So you have one carbon, so twice of 1 becomes 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. So you, in methane you have CH4. In the next hydrocarbon, you use the same formula. If there are two carbons, if the value of N is 2, then H becomes 2 into 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6. It becomes 6. The next one is the next member of this kind of compounds having the same general formula would be C3H8. That is, why C3H8? C3, 3 2s are 6. 6 plus 2, 8. So 2 into 3 plus 2. C4 is if n is 4, then 2n plus 2, 4 twos are 8, 8 plus 2 is 10. So you get C4H10. So what are we observing? We are getting a series of hydrocarbons or compounds which can be represented by the same general formula. And the only difference is that each next member has one greater value of n. As n, the number of n keeps on increasing, you get a series of hydrocarbons. Such a series of hydrocarbons, which can be described by the same, um, by the same general formula, are known as homologous series. Now, a group or a series of organic compounds, each containing a characteristic functional group. In this case, there is the what is the functional group? It is just an alkane, so there is no special atom. It's just that they are all single bonds or with, uh, between the carbons. And it forms a homologous series. A group or series of organic compounds, each containing a characteristic functional group, forms a homologous series and the members are called homologies. They can be represented, due to dearth of space I have not written, they can be represented by one common general formula. If you know the general formula, you can simply write the entire series. For example, let us take the second example. What is the homologous series be like? Here you have Cn, H, 2n plus 1, OH. Now this is the general formula for alcohols. OH, you see, is the functional group. Where do we have? Yes, alcohols are the functional group, OH. So all these compounds are alcohols and they are forming a homologous series. How are they? Because I can represent it by one simple formula. And the same formula, if I keep changing the number of N, I will get the different compounds of um, alcohols. So the first member, the first alcohol would be if methane, in methane, one of the hydrogens is replaced by an OH. So what was an alkane CNH2N plus 2? So if you remove one hydrogen, what are you left with? You are left with CNH2N plus 1. So CNH2N plus 1 and OH is added to it. That turns the compound into an alcohol. So just as we got a series, the homologous series of alkanes, similarly using this formula we will get the homologous series of alcohols. What is it? C1, H, 2 1s are 2, uh, plus 1 is 3. So C, H, 3, OH. So second, if N is 2, C, 2, H, 2 2s are 4, 4 plus 1, 5, and OH, C2, H5, OH. Next compound, C4, C, oh, sorry, C3, C3, 3 2 is a 6, 6 plus 1, 7, so C3, H7, OH. C4, H will be 8 plus 1, 9, OH, so C4, H9, OH. So what are we observing? We are getting a homologous series of alcohols. 
Similarly, here we've got a homolocal series of aldehydes. I would encourage you to find out the general formula for it yourself. It's not at all difficult. Now, what is it in addition that you observe in a homologous series? That not only can they be represented by a same general formula, and if we just keep in changing the number of n, we will get the entire homologous series. Each member, consecutive member, in a homologous series differs from its predecessor by a CH2. You will observe that each new member is different from the previous member by just a one carbon and two hydrogens. So we say it, the next member is only CH2 greater than the previous one. So you had CH4, uh, sorry, CH4. This was C2, which means one more C and two more hydrogens. This is another C that is from two to three. You get one more carbon and how many hydrogens were there? Six. And how many are there now? Eight. So two more. Every next member is CH2 greater than the previous member. So this, by just writing down the homologous series, you get an entire class of compounds which have the same property. If it has the same functional group, all these compounds that you will be forming, you can go on and on and on and on until 100 carbons. You will have the same general formula and all these compounds would be alcohols. If I did this and I continue on and on and on, all of them would be alkanes. So a homologous series is a series or group of compounds which have the same general formula and since they have the same functional group, they have similar properties also. So these two terms were important for you to know. Now I have already made nine videos on IUPAC nomenclature. So I will be renaming them and adding, uh, uh, adding them in sequence to the remaining uh, I mean, as the consecutive videos of this chapter. And then after that, we'll take up the next topic. So with this, I would wind up today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.